the Steelers are always are always good. Uh, Coach hasn't had a losing season yet, and the Texans just whooped them. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today, this is an interesting first time with our Cavalcade of Stars, starting off with my favorite team leader, Mr. Mike King. Mr. King, how are you doing this evening? Uh, Giants can't disappoint me today, so I'm doing well. (laughs) (laughs) And also with us today... Boy guard extraordinaire, leader uh, of leaders, G Sumner. G, how are you, sir? Oh, you see the jersey. We're 4-0, and one of two, <laughs> so uh, feeling pretty good. All right, so on today's Top Shelf Tuesday, we're going to talk about the best and worst things we saw, most surprising things we saw. Segment two, don't bet on it. We're going to talk about the changing rules of betting amongst the venting of players. And then segment three, strictly for entertainment purposes only, we're going to talk about my big day. But first, G, you got the jersey on. Let's start with you. What is the best thing you saw today? You can't think I'm going anywhere else. It's got to be Christian McCaffrey, four touchdowns in those 49ers. They're not just the defensive team. Brock Purdy is legit, 20 of 21, 283 yards, no turnovers. C-Mac running and catching all over the field. Looking like Al Bundy scoring four touchdowns Al Bundy, in one field. man. I'm telling you, they look <laughs> official. I don't want to I don't want to uh jump the gun too early, but uh Niners look good. Best all I right. saw today. All right, Mike, what was the best thing you saw today, sir? I think it's the Bills. Everyone was the Dolphins were everybody was talking about the Dolphins. This is Super Bowl team and the Bills were like, "No, no, no. That's that that was cute last week. It's it's it, this is the real team." And I am so glad you said that because that's the best thing I saw today. The NFL, gentlemen and fans out there, is a week-to-week league. Whatever you saw last week, forget it because it's not coming back. And, yeah, you'll hear about me talk about that more in uh, segment three. But, Mike, let's just say I agree with you. I'm going to stay with you, Mike. What's the worst thing you saw today, sir? I mean, I feel like it has to be the Bears. They had the huge lead, and I saw the things. What was it? The uh, Broncos defense hadn't allowed um, an incompletion for like three weeks in the first quarter or something like that. And Justin Fields was 14 of 14 and three times, whatever it was. And oh, he fixed it. And then they still were the Bears. <laughs> All yeah. right. Gee, what was the worst thing you saw today? Uh, I feel like it's got to be the Bengals. You know, coming off, uh, they finally got off the snide, got their first win, uh, looked decent last week, and then you expect them to keep the party going, and they got spanked in Tennessee today. Offense looked horrible. Uh, they got some. They got some things to figure out. <laughs> yes, uh, Mike. We're two for two. Worst thing I saw was Bears gave up seventeen in the fourth to Russell Wilson. Uh, so yeah, that was that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. G, what's the most surprising thing you saw today? Most surprising thing. Um, God, I just seeing the New England Patriots and how bad a Bill Belichick run team is. Uh, you know. I won't blame you. Can't blame Belichick for the Mac Jones throwing the ball across the field for a pick six, but just not great defensively uh, today, which is what they hang their hat on. They look terrible offensively, and it's the first time I've ever seen a Bill Belichick team with not much hope at all. Uh, so yeah, surprising they, to see. They look really bad, Mike. What was the most surprising thing you saw today? I think I'm going Texans because. Steelers are always are always good. Uh, Coach hasn't had a losing season yet, and the Texans just whooped them. Molly whooped them, and they look pretty good. So that's that's where I'm that's where I'm going. Good for them. He's going to get that first losing season this year. Oh now come on now. All right. Most surprising thing I saw today: Philly's clock management at the end of regulation. So I thought they were going to run the ball, make them call the timeouts, kick the field goal, keep it moving. Got to do a double move, over-the-top score, 
get a taunting penalty, genius, get the 15 yards, and my man Sam Howe told everybody he's good and just let him grow and develop. I ain't think he's going to tie it up, but that clock management ha- had me pause the day, had me pause the day. So, uh, but my backup was Houston because they, they won and won clean. All right. So, fans, when we get back, a couple of issues I want to talk about, especially with the gambling piece. Glad I got these two on with me. We'll be right back on the I Coaches podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast and segment two. Don't bet on it. The NFL is modifying its league gambling policies that will punish players more harshly for betting on their own teams while also amending uh, the rules to allow some players, including Detroit Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams, to return to the field quicker. So under the new policy, here's the a player who places a bet involving his own team will be suspended at least two years. Bets placed on NFL games will result in at least a one-year suspension. Betting on non-NFL sports while at the team facility or on team-related travel will now result in a two-game suspension for the first violation, six games for the second violation, and one year for the third. So this will allow Williams, Tennessee Titans offensive tackle, Nick Pettit Ferrer and free agent uh, Stanley Barry Hill to be reinstated effective Monday. So when this comes out, they may be already signed to the teams. The revised policy applies to players only, not any other team personnel. Mike, you're my union guy. What do you think about the adjustments to the NFL gambling policy? I think the NFL got in bed with the gambling companies. So, I mean, why don't they punish them for wearing Nike and drinking Gatorade? Because uh, they're just doing what the NFL commercials are telling them, like what, what they're telling them to do. That's, that's, that's how the NFL is making their money is making deals with FanDuel and you know, whoever they're making their deals with. I, I get it. It's just, it just seems kind of bad when NFL is doing so well from all this money they get from gambling and they're like, not for you. <laughs> you, but you can do it, but not for you. All right, G. From the player perspective, how do you feel about the modifications? Um, from the player perspective, it's just something you got to get along, go along with. Uh, the landscape of football and sports is changing in many ways, and gambling is one of them. It's made accessible to the fans. The fans want to do it, whether it's the teams or fantasy, and so because the NFL is partnering with them with all these different uh gambling companies and houses and all of that like mike said uh they got a responsibility to their fans who are paying for these tickets and putting money on these sports to keep the game clean so uh they do that with harsher penalties so i i, I look at it as you could have seen it coming all right so now i'm going to say with you g because uh at times in your career you have voiced displeasure so we've got two wide receivers out here 
Jamar Chase. So after the loss that the Bengals had, and they played really bad, and I keep telling you Joe Burrow was like hurt, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, superstar wide receiver Jamar Chase spoke out about the lack of offensive production, especially surrounding Joe Burrow's calf. When asked about the injury and the offense, he mentioned that he knows Burrow is struggling, but he also wanted to make it clear that let's just say he's open. Okay, I won't he's use the, the language, but uh, G again, what, what are your thoughts on Jamar Chase and, and him voicing his displeasure? I got no problem with it, you know. Uh, I and expect it. The wide receiver has always been the diva position. They want the ball and uh, deserve the ball. And we saw Jamar Chase last week. After making those comments, he goes out and puts up eleven catches, has his best game of the season. So uh, it's easy to uh, keep those guys quiet and humble when you're winning and everybody's having fun. But drop a couple of games, and those superstar receivers are going to start looking at what we're not doing, which is getting them the damn ball. All right, Keyshawn. Mike, <laughs> you have sat in a department meeting or two with people voicing their displeasure. What do you think about Jamar Chase's comment? I just wanted some offensive linemen to start doing this thing. I always block for the quarterback. <laughs> no one gets credit. <laughs> it's always the receiver. It'd just be more fun if it was in one of these other positions. The punter. I always kick the ball inside the 20. Um He's right. Give him the ball. <laughs> He's the team. If Joe Burrow can't give him the ball, they lose. Tw- what, they can't they get three points. I mean, look what Justin Jefferson did today. You have a great receiver. You use a great receiver. All right. So now speaking of not being a great receiver, Chase Claypool. And Mike, I'm going to start with you. Bears wide receiver Chase Claypool was inactive for Sunday's game. The last I heard of him, uh, he was expressing his frustration last week about his uses in the offense, and he said he didn't think he was being put in the best position to showcase his skill set. Uh, Mike, any thoughts on Chase Claypool voicing his displeasure? The Steelers traded him last year, right? The Steelers know when to get away from receiver. They, they, they kind of, if there's a franchise that has their like finger on the pulse, when, when certain teams get rid of a player, they're usually right. Patriots, usually right. Steelers, usually right. That being said, if if he's on the cheap, I hope the Giants take a look at him because we could always use receiver help. <laughs> Gee, what about Chase Claypool? Because, again, you have been in locker rooms with underperforming players speaking very loudly. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about him? <laughs> um. It's a tough spot for Chase because some of what he said is correct. I don't think he's been put in positions to succeed. Uh, And the few opportunities he has, he hasn't necessarily come up big. Uh, But it's a lot easier to accept those comments when they're coming from a Jamar Chase or A.J. Brown who are out there producing. Chase Claypool, you got to shut the hell up and go (laughs) out there and do something before you start making demands and requests. Yeah, I did see the tape about that lack of effort. So, yeah, I didn't think he'd be <laughs> the that, one. <laughs> and now they're looking to trade him. They're all for putting him on the market. So, Oh, man, ham sandwich. Okay. Yep. All right, to close out the segment, we're going to do some uh, quick talk on some quarterback situations. Uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you so you can uh, gleefully uh, laugh at this. What's going on in the Jets quarterback situation, man? I, it's not good. How would you handle that situation? Uh, I think the way you handle it is you have a head coach who doesn't allow the players to publicly ridicule the quarterback last year, publicly try and get a new quarterback all summer, and then always say the wrong thing at the press conference now that the quarterback that everyone hated has to be the, the savior of the franchise. They couldn't have handled Zach Wilson any worse. And it's it's coaching. I can think of every good coach, every coach worth a darn in the NFL that wouldn't let the players wear T-shirts mentioning the backup quarterback last year for their number two pick from, like, what, the year before. Like, how poorly, when, when you let everyone do whatever, it's the same thing as teaching. If you let everyone do whatever <laughs> they want, the classroom doesn't run. Like, there has to be some rules. 
You don't have to be like the angriest screaming, yelling person, but, but people in class need to know like, Hey, come on, it's time to learn. Right. When he lets the players do whatever they want, this is what happens. And now no one respect, no one respected him last year and they ruined it. And now they're stuck with it. They're not going to get a Kirk cousins. The season's over. And it couldn't happen to a nicer franchise. Very happy. All right, G. I am going to let you run the Patriot. That was bad today. That was real bad. (laughs) And then they put the other guy in, and uh, he ain't no good either. And it was Bill Belichick last year with the bright idea of having whatever that offensive coordinator situation was. And Mac Jones has regressed. How are you handling this situation, sir? I think you let it play out. You let Mac Jones be Mac Jones for the rest of the season. And if it's going to continue down this path, they're in a tough division with the Dolphins, the Bills, uh, if the Jets can ever figure out the quarterback. So you let Mac Jones audition because that's what he's doing right now. And if you continue to lose games, then you get put yourself somewhere near the top of the draft in this great uh, quarterback draft class coming up. So let it play out. Let Mac tell Mac, hey, you got to go earn your money at this point uh, and we'll see what happens. All right. Mike, I'm going to give you the Steelers. Kenny Pickett's hurt, and he wasn't playing that well anyway. <laughs> and they're not putting no points on the board. Mike Tomlin's got a streak going on, and uh, that's why I moved away from G. Because he's already <laughs> off the wagon. I got it lined up. <laughs> I got him. What are you up. doing if you're the Steelers, man? You got Mitch Trubisky as your backup, and Mason Rudolph as third string. Your quarterback room is pretty secure, but they're no good. How are you handling it, Mike? I think very similarly. You let the season play out, and if you are lucky enough to be bad enough, you take one of the quarterbacks. Um, you got. Well, obviously, they have two wins. That might be too much to get the, the big prize. But there's a Sanders available, potentially like the 5 to 10 range in the first round. And if the Steelers are a 5 6 win team, why not? Um, or the UNC quarterback. I mean, there's, there's going to be, and then there's going to be two quarterbacks we've never heard of who end up uh, getting top 10 pick potential. Kenny Pickett, mm. The NFL has shown the last couple of years, you got like a one, two year window. And if, if you don't <laughs> show it, done. don't move on. Where's Josh Rosen? Okay. Sorry about that. Yikes. Uh, hey, Gee, we're going to close out with you in Minnesota. My, one of my five favorite players in the league is Kirk Cousins. I do not hide my love of Kirk Cousins as agent because that guy keeps failing up the ladder every year. And fans, if you want to Google Kirk Cousins' career earnings and then look at his career record. But if you're Minnesota, G, what are you doing? Because this is not good. You let it play out. I mean, unless the Jets come calling and are willing to give you a second or third round pick midseason for him, you let it play out. You don't owe him any money after this. You go out into free agency. You've got star receiver. Uh, you just drafted another receiver in the first round. You go try and get a free agent quarterback. Kirk Cousins is just good enough to keep you out of contention. So you let this play out. They're not going to win anything this year. And then uh, see what you can get next year. Somebody's going to pay him next year. I there's, guarantee oh, there's you. A, there's, a home for him. there's a home for him. Uh, but, yeah, it's not going to be Minnesota. Okay. All right, fans. So when we get back, we're going to close out talking about things strictly for entertainment purposes only. We'll be right back on the Coaches Podcast. The high school and college academic and athletic landscape is changing. The growing number of college transfers, as well as student athletes being able to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness has given student athletes the freedom and power to make life-changing decisions. That is why it is important for student athletes to be properly informed throughout the decision-making process. The difference between success and failure is often measured not by yards, but by inches. And even the most successful coaches and players use outside independent consultants to help improve their decision making, which improves their results. That is what the CKA Save Project would like to do for student athletes across the country, improve their academic and athletic results. 
Our academic and athletic consulting services assist student athletes with the college decision-making process. The CKA team of former high school and college coaches can provide student athletes an independent assessment of their academic and athletic skills to assist student athletes in their college decision-making process. Let the CKA team evaluate your academic and athletic ability to assist you in finding the right fit for your academic and athletic career. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at ckasaveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. Strictly for entertainment purposes only. But first, let's start with the top five. Mr. King, do you have a top five for us going into uh, after uh, this week, sir? Um, I think I'll try and think of an order. We'll probably go from I think of 49ers, Bills, Eagles, or uh, Chiefs, Eagles, and I'll still put the Dolphins, but we'll, we'll see. Okay. G, what do you got for top five? I want to go Niners and Eagles, keeping the undefeated teams at the top. Then I'll go uh, Chiefs, Bills, and round out with the Cowboys uh, because of their strong defense they've shown this year. All right. So, season-long bets. Steelers, uh, eight and a half is not looking good. (laughs) They're two and two right now, and it's going the wrong way, Coach. Jags, ten. I got two and two. But at least that two and two looks better than the Steelers does. Uh, the Jets, uh, that that's just done. We're just gonna, as we said in segment two, we're gonna just play this one out uh, and hope somebody else comes in. Fellas, did the Chargers win? <laughs> yes, they won. Yeah. They right, tried two, and two for the Chargers. They tried they to lose. They tried it. everything they could to lose it. That coach uh, got to go. All right, did the Packers win? Or they are they on a buy? I don't know. They got, they got spanked they, they on get, Thursday. Yeah, they got killed. Detroit. Oh yes, yes they did. Okay, that's not working out for me. Uh, Carolina took another L today, correct? Yeah. Or did they? Or did they play on Monday? <laughs> no, they 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 got beat. They lost to Minnesota. Oh, Kurt so finally that's, got one. That's that's terrible. All right, the Commanders lost, but it was a strong loss. And Seattle plays Monday, so I think Seattle plays Monday. Yeah, Seattle Giants. Yeah. All right. So in terms of the gambling, last week I was one and four. Again, NFL is a week to week uh league this week for the first time this season. It's five and oh fellas. I'm eleven and nine on the season. Fifty five percent. Let me tell you how it broke down. No my spread. I had Buffalo minus two and a half. Again, just like Mike said in segment one, there's a lot of loud talking. We're all loud talking. You take the win, you go home, and you don't say nothing. Talking about innovating a league and cheat codes. And okay, this is the NF. To see what you got next week. I had Pittsburgh under 42 because they can't score. Uh, I had a two play of Jacksonville minus three and a half and Tampa Bay under 40 and a half. Jacksonville lives in Europe, man, so they go yeah. every year. So they're used to that nine o'clock start time. And then Tampa Bay. Uh, Baker's still feeling dangerous, so that was a good one. My three play, Philadelphia tried to give it away, but they didn't. San Francisco and Dallas. Uh, now we're gonna roll with San Francisco and follow and send his best G because he was talking real loud last night. And my upset, I heard Deshaun wasn't gonna play, and Baltimore was still the underdog, took Baltimore, went to the pay window. Uh, G, did you have anything uh, on the line strictly for entertainment purposes only this week? Oh man, I went, I went on them Niners and Christian McCaffrey getting in the end zone again, and he got me four. So man, that's uh, like Alabama and the spread uh, back in the day. That was yeah, the easiest man. money to be. <laughs> Christian Kurt, Christian McCaffrey touchdown is is my Jokic triple double that I was using in the <laughs> NBA season. So it's been good to me. <laughs> Mike, did you do anything strictly for entertainment purposes only? No, I, w- I wanted to uh, save my money. <laughs> <laughs> Robert would be proud of you. All right. So week five game of notes. First of all, we got bye weeks. Cleveland's on a bye. Rams are on a bye. Seattle's on a bye. And Tampa Bay's on a bye. So Thursday night, Chicago comes to D.C. to take on the Commanders. That is a game of notes. 
And we have three other games of note for Sunday. Jacksonville against Buffalo, and I believe that's uh, over the pond. It's another London game. Baltimore versus Pittsburgh, because I think uh, they're going to keep piling on. And Tomlin said changes will be made. And again, I I, I like tragedies like this. The Jets travel to Denver. (laughs) That ought to be fun for all the wrong reasons. Mike, are there any games next week you're uh, interested in that tickles your fancy or excites your soul? I feel like if you, it's it's a pretty crappy slate of games, except Cowboys 49ers is the marquee, and then uh, Giants Dolphins potentially, but the rest of the games are just kind of eh. <laughs> hey, gee, are you in agreement with that? Yeah, it's got to be Giants Niners next week, prime time. I mean, they're Giants, Niners, Cowboys, Niners. Sorry. Is that Monday night or Sunday night? Sunday night. All right. Well, we won't talk about it because we tape early. Okay. Uh, In other words, uh, folks, we're about to wrap this up. Still got Merch Alert on sale. Go to ckasaveproject.itemorder.com and go ahead and get your OCP merchandise and your CKA merchandise Portion of the proceeds go to getting that fine book in the hands of young scholars out there. So uh, we definitely want to do that. Before we close, Mike, anything you're looking forward to next week, sir? Uh, not not too much. Just uh, hoping the Giants uh, win tomorrow so then I care more about the Giants-Dolphins game. Otherwise, season's over and – I'll keep doing these uh, podcasts and talk about the health season where I'm just looking at mock drafts. Gee, anything you're looking forward to next week? Hey, man, I'm going to give you a shameless plug. I'm looking forward to the, this week's Monday Motivation. I, I, I jumped on board and taking a listen, and uh, yeah, I'm using it uh, along with the student athletes for my approach at work to get my week started off. So appreciate uh, that. Looking forward to the morning. Much Thank obliged, you. much appreciated. Thought of one. Maryland, Ohio State. <laughs> they're, they're, they're real. If they if they lose, they're the frauds that I expect them to be. But can you imagine? Man, can you about, imagine? They're about to have that uh Colorado Oregon reality. I mean, co- yeah, Colorado yeah. Oregon reality moment. Or the Colorado um, USC. Oh, they're not that bad. <laughs> You'll take that one. <laughs> All right. Well, again, on behalf of our Cavalcade of Stars, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Odd Coaches podcast, and we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care, and thanks for the shout-out, G. Check out Monday Motivation and share with others. We'll see you next time. The Odd Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.